Hello friends and welcome to 3ABN Today. We are so thankful and glad again, as always, that you take time out of your busy day to join us. Um, this is the Three Angels Broadcasting Network. So we're all about making sure that the undiluted Three Angels messages, the gospel, the everlasting gospel of Jesus is going all around the world. And uh, we just want to thank you as always for your continual love, prayers and support of 3ABN ministry as this message is going all around the world right now as we speak. So again, thank you for joining us. We have such a special program for you today, one in which I myself am going to be educated on. I'm going to be learning as well. I'll ride along with you and I'm excited to hear about this because uh, we're going to be talking about health. We're going to be talking about a specific aspect of health and how we can become a healthier body, a healthier person for Jesus Christ. And so let me go ahead and introduce our guest today. Before we have our special music, we have with us Pastor Steve Wahlberg from White Horse Media. You are the director and speaker of White Horse Media. It's a blessing to have you, brother. Yes, thank you, Ryan. Uh, I think this is our first program we've done together. That's I've right. I've been to th at 3ABN many times, and so I'm glad to do this with you. And Thanks for having me as your guest. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to get into, uh, for some of our new viewers who may not know who Pastor Steve is or may not know a little bit about uh, what White Horse Media is, we're going to talk about that in just a few moments as well as get into a topic that uh, I believe is probably an important one as I'm learning more about and hearing him speak about it uh, behind the scenes. I'm excited to learn about it. But before we go any further, we're going to have a special music by Sister Mary Grace, and she's going to be sharing, us, uh, sharing with us a beautiful number entitled, We Shall Behold Him.
Amen. Praise the Lord. That was a, that was that was a blessing indeed. Thank you so much, Mary. Well, we I'm excited about getting into our program here with Pastor Steve Wahlberg, and it just seems like it was just yesterday to me. But for those of you who may not know, I haven't always been a Seventh Day Adventist, as I'm I believe you told me you haven't always been a Seventh Day Adventist either. Right. But it just seems like it was yesterday. I was I was not a Seventh Day Adventist right. Christian, but I was learning these powerful truths. And um, I will never forget back in the day, I think this was like 2006, 2007, I, I was doing some research on, you know, the, the, the Antichrist and end, end time events, Bible prophecy. And I'm on YouTube, I'm on the internet searching and up comes across my screen, White Horse Media, Steve Wahlberg. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. So I clicked on it and I didn't even know you were even associated with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I didn't know that you were a, a minister of the Adventist Church, but I knew that everything you were preaching was biblical. It sounded just like what I had read in some of the previous uh, studies that I'd done. And your ministry early on, whether you know it or not, blessed me tremendously and has brought me into a more refined knowledge and understanding <laughs> of Bible prophecy and end time events. Pastor Steve Wahlberg, it's a blessing to have you, brother. Uh, and you've come to share with us today White Horse Media. For those, for, for, let's start with this. There may be someone at home that doesn't know who you are and uh, doesn't really know a lot about White Horse Media. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, uh, thanks, and thank you, Ryan. This is great. Sure. Uh, we have a, our main website is whitehorsemedia.com. Uh, we picked the name White Horse because of Revelation 19 that mm -hmm. describes Jesus coming on a white horse right. to uh, crush all the forces of evil, all the world forces of the devil. So we have a, a, an office in Priest River, Idaho. I live there too, next, next door to the office. We have a great staff, we have a team, we have a big studio, we produce programs on a whole host of topics. Uh, a number of us travel and hold seminars. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to help people to get ready for the coming of Jesus, mm. to know about his love, his, uh, his power, his, his word, his Amen. truth. And so that's what we're all about. Uh, and, and I love 3ABN, I've been here many times. Our <laughs> programs have been on 3ABN in the past and will be in the future. Amen. And so it's just, uh, it's great to fly into St. Louis, get my rental car, drive here, and have this chance to be with you. Amen, praise the Lord. I, I have uh, turned 3ABN on many times and seen you on there and doing programming. And uh, you're also an author. You've, you've authored and published many different books. And uh, maybe tell us some about something about maybe some new projects or something you've done yeah, lately. Well, yeah, I, I, I never planned on being a writer, but God has just moved me into, into this. And I think the count is somewhere around 40 books I've written. Uh, you have a couple wow. of them there. Right. Um, and the Lord has just, he's been so good to me. Amen. I've written on a, on a variety of topics. Uh, the newest one is, is you have is called Approaching Armageddon. That's right. Which is our brand new book, just came out this week. That's right, this is it and, right here. And, and then the subtitle is Discover Hope Beyond Earth's Final Battle. Wow. And it's all about basically what's happening in the world, this crazy world, all the signs and the mayhem and the violence and the sexual immorality and a whole host of things. Uh, and that book, uh, first of all, builds confidence in the Bible, that the That's Bible right. is true, that there were prophecies in the past that uh, were fulfilled in the past exactly, and we can have confidence that what it says about what's happening today, mm -hmm. that that's real, and what it says about the future, about Jesus coming and how God's gonna right. get rid of sin, it's all, uh, it's all in one little book, Approaching Armageddon. So that's Praise our newest Lord. our Amen. newest work. Amen, we're gonna tell you how to get a copy of this or how you can get a copy of this uh, later in the program. Uh, let's talk about another project you have, or at least a, a published project here, uh, Climate Change, is it the end of the world? Right, right? I just did a 3 ABA and radio interview on that topic uh, earlier today, and that book deals with the the, the huge movement uh, these days, the climate change movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's there's hardly a, a disaster that hits this planet That's right. that is not connected by many people to climate change. And so that book kind of examines that whole issue, and then it talks about uh, the ultimate climate change is coming. Right. And Jesus comes, and it says in Second Peter. Uh, the heavens and the earth will be on fire that's and right. God, that's real global warming. That's right. And God's going to completely get rid of sin. And then he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth where there's not going to be any sin, suffering, sorrow, or death. 
and, and that mm. book kind of looks at the big picture and ultimately oh. focuses on the fact that man cannot solve it, its own problems, you know, that we need a divine solution. We need Jesus. So Amen. that's one of our many pocketbooks. Yes, uh, uh, I think I've, ta I've mentioned to you that I have another book that's not, it's in production and it's called uh, The Bloody Woman and the Seven-Headed Beast, right. <laughs> uh, which is a Bible study of the book of Revelation chapter 17, the right. woman riding this, this creature. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's coming and we've got a lot of different projects. We have another project that we're working on. Uh, it's a production called The Crowning Act, mm. which is to expose Satan's crowning act mm. of uh, personating Jesus oh, yes. during the final, final crisis. So that's we're right. working on that right now and that should be ready as probably a one hour uh, docudrama. Wow. And it's gonna be very powerful, uh, pointing to the real Jesus who's gonna come in the clouds. He's not gonna walk around on the earth and do miracles. Praise the Lord, so. amen, absolutely. We know it's gonna be a blessing and I've read several of your books, have several of your books in my library at home and and uh, I know your ministry is going to be a blessing. These projects are going to be a blessing to many of you. And we'll talk, as I said, a little bit more about how you can get a hold of those projects uh, toward the end of this presentation. But I have another book here uh, that when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> but this kind of sets us up for what you've come to talk to us uh, about today and to educate me and many of you at home about. Uh, we have a book here entitled Sprout Power. Tell us a little bit about that, and then you can kind of set us up for uh, the, our discussion discussion this evening or today. Right, and uh, Sprout Power is about the incredible health benefits of growing sprouts and microgreens. Right. And as I thought about our interview, normally when I come to 3ABN and do programs, you know, I'm in my suit, my tie, right. as you are, which is, <laughs> which is great and appropriate. But I thought to myself, you know, our topic specifically in this segment is going to be on health and on, on how to, you know, get your hands into growing mm. sprouts and That's microgreens right. and <laughs> things like wheatgrass and uh, alfalfa and broccoli and clover. And so I thought, I think I'm gonna forego the tie and wear my green shirt and so. <laughs> right, uh, no, it looks good, it looks good. I was telling you, you look like you're about to, you're ready to go out into the garden any yeah. moment, so you're good. Yeah, and I have a big garden. I live in North Idaho and we don't have a big long growing season because you know, it gets winter and spring and then summer. And, but I've got, I still got tomatoes growing and some Swiss chard and some kale and I've got a lot of fruit trees, nice. plums and, and there's just nothing like picking, uh, you know, an apple or a pear or a plum mm -hmm. from your own fruit tree. <laughs> it's right? just, it's a blessing. But sprouting has been a big part of my life. And uh, yeah, so, so kind of give us that. a little bit of background on how you came, became so interested in sprouting, uh, and kind of set this up because give us a little bit of backstory. So what brought about the interest to, in sprouting for you. Yeah, and you know, before I do that, let's let's just put a picture of the book on the screen. Oh, that's right, yeah. And then we'll put a picture of me surrounded by all these sprouts. Okay, there's Sprout that's Power, it. little pocketbook. And now let's go to the next one that shows me surrounded by all these sprouts. Just oh, to nice. let people know that, <laughs> yes, I, I really do do this. <laughs> that's that's awesome. me and my kids. Uh, my kids are eating sunflower greens there. <laughs> and uh, so I've been doing this for Wow. Over 40 years, uh, as you mentioned, you know, you didn't grow up in the church and right. I didn't either. Uh, I grew up in, in North Hollywood, Studio City, Southern California, wow. and I lived a wild life. I grew up in a very secular Jewish home. And as a teenager, I just took the plunge into a, a wild life of the parties and the, the concerts and the discos and, mm -hmm. and, and drugs. And uh, somewhere during my teenage years, I started thinking about health. All right. And how, you know, because I was doing all these crazy things, I needed to make sure that I didn't, you know, fall over and die. Right. <laughs> and that I needed to be concerned about my health as well. And it seems strange, you know, I'm going to the disco, staying up till four, four o'clock in the morning, uh, using drugs and thinking about health. But, <laughs> but again, I, you know, I didn't know anything right. about God. I wasn't thinking about the Bible. I was just thinking about uh, doing something for my body. And somehow uh, in that course of time, as a teenager, I learned about the incredible health benefits of growing your own sprouts and microgreens. Mm. So I began to do this okay. in, my, in my bedroom. All right. Uh, and, and I learned how to do this. And I read books on sprouting. And so I would, I would grow all these sprouts in my room or in my, in my bathroom, in the kitchen sometimes. And I would create these massive sprout salads that were just raw, organic, no spray, no pesticides, uh, wow. living. And I put avocado and lemon 
and um, some seasonings, and, and I would just devour these right. sprout salads. And oh man, I tell you, they were good. <laughs> and I, I can't say for sure, but I think that one of the things that got me through my teenage years or, or uh, helped me to maintain my health mm. was the fact that I was growing a lot of sprouts. And, and I've continued to do this, See, even you know, after I became a Christian at the age of 20, which was 41 years ago, uh, I continued to sprout. And I learned more about health, about uh, what people call the eight laws of health, you know, right, uh, right. the New Start program, nutrition, right. exercise, water, sunlight, uh, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. And, uh, but, and the end for New Start, which comes to nutrition, the word nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's hardly any thing that you can put into your body that has more nutritional punch and power than growing your own sprouts and microgreens. Wow, okay. So I've been doing this for a long time. You got me hooked, you and, got me hooked. <laughs> and, I, and I've been through, in the course of my Christian life, I've been through uh, some dark days, some real struggles, sure. some real battles, which I'm, I'm sure you have. And, and I believe that consistently adding sprouts to my diet has helped my body to, uh, to weather Wow. many storms and so now I'm 61 and, and just before I came here I got up at 5 30 in the morning and I ran I sure. walked and ran about four miles and God is blessing my health and I think that growing sprouts is a big part of that okay all right so sprouting what is it when you talk about sprouting what's happening when when the sprouting process is taking place kind of walk us through that Right, sure. Yeah, uh, it, w basically what, what sprouting is, is I mean, everything that's, that grows, that's a vegetable. We all know that vegetables are good for us, fruit good for us, uh, whether it's fruit or vegetable. It all starts with a seed. Okay. And um, w when you sprout a seed, basically you, you take a seed, and, and I'll actually show our viewers in a little bit right. how to grow lentil sprouts in, oh, in their no. house. But when you take a seed and you put it in water, or are you surrounded in water, you activate it you, okay. you, and it begins to germinate. And so the little seed, whether whatever kind of seed it is, mm -hmm. uh, begins to grow. And there's something miraculous that most people have never even thought of. And that is that when a seed begins to grow and it gets bigger, the nutrition that it is getting in order for it to get bigger is not coming from the water. If you're just putting a seed or some seeds in a, in a, in a little jar of water. But the, the um, nutrients within the seed, when it begins to germinate, actually begin to multiply. It's just like, a, like when a human is, is conceived right. inside a, a, a woman, yeah. you know, you have this, uh, this one new zygote, the sperm right. meets the egg and it becomes a zygote. Right. And then what happens is that that zygote divides and you have a perfect copy of the DNA on both sides, and then it divides again and divides again and divides, divides again. And so the, the divisions are happening on its own. Wow. And that's what happens with a seed. A seed begins to uh, multiply its vitamin A, its vitamin B, its vitamin C, its vitamin, you know, different vitamins and minerals and nutrients and uh, uh, phytochemicals and all these different things begin to just multiply. It's a and, miracle. And, that's right. It, and, 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 and what people it, don't yeah. realize is that the, the nutritional uh, profile within a growing seed is very, very powerful. Uh, and and the, the nutrients multiply sometimes uh, 100, 200, 300 times what's in the original seed. And wow. those who have researched uh, growing seeds and sprouts and microgreens, we, when you grow a, a little seed about this big, it's a sprout. You can grow it a little bit bigger. Right. But then uh, when you grow it a little bit bigger into the next stage where the little leaves start coming out, and then it becomes what's called a microgreen. Right. Uh, those who have studied, done nutritional scientific research on this have sure. concluded that when you take from the seed to the full broccoli head in the garden, its peak nutritional density is at the microgreen stage. Really? And if you take a pound of, uh, of broccoli microgreens and then put a pound of broccoli from your garden, pound for pound, there is a lot more nutrition in the, wow. in the broccoli sprouts and microgreens than there is even in your own garden. That is so, interesting. And so what's, what the, the whole thing of sprouting is all about is learning how to grow these seeds so you can get those nutrients into your body and they will uh, benefit every cell of, of you. <laughs> 
It's amazing. So as you're describing this, I can tell you've got it down to a science, but it is a it's, science. It's, a, it's, but it's also a miracle in and of itself. Cause how do you explain how that happens? Right. That's how right. a baby comes about, you know, that's, that's it's a right. miracle. And how a God. seed grows. Right. And, and you know, these days people are very, I mean, a lot of people are concerned about their health sure. and we all know that uh, because of commercial farming, the soil that many of the things that you get in the market, the soil is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And that affects the nutrients that are in what you buy at, uh, at Walmart. Sure. Uh, and, and people are also concerned about heavy uh, pesticide use, a lot of sure. pesticides. And then there's the transit time when you first right. pick something by the time it gets to the market and then gets to you, there's nutritional degradation. And then people are concerned about uh, genetically modified foods. And there's just a whole host of concerns about you know, the, the nutrients that we're getting, even if you go to a market and buy produce. Right. And the, the, uh, the beauty of growing sprouts is that you're doing it yourself. You're not spraying it. It's non-GMO. It's alive. Uh, there's no chemicals and there's no transit time from uh, from picking it, you know, two weeks later when it gets in the in the market. But you can actually grow these sprouts. You can put them in a in a in a salad, in a wrap, in a sandwich, and you can just get the full <laughs> benefit right. of uh, of something living, which you just you know, there's really hardly any comparison. I mean, you can take supplements, you can take pills, wow. uh, you can you can do the best you can with uh, with your your mm -hmm. diet. But when you eat a lot of sprouts, you are getting uh, a, a dose know, of nutrition man. that you just can't get anywhere else. Right. And it's not hard to do, it's inexpensive. Uh, you know, people say, well, I, I don't have a garden, so I can't right. grow. I don't have land, so I can't grow. Yes, you can. You can have a, uh, a garden in your kitchen. That's right. If people say, well, I don't have a lot of money. You don't need a lot of money. That's people right. say, well, I don't have much room. You don't need much room. All you need is a place under your sink right. and some water and some seeds. As people say, well, I don't have a green thumb. I can't do this. Right. You don't need a green thumb. <laughs> you can learn the simple ways of growing sprouts. Right. And, and once you, you know, get this and figure out how to do it and the benefits of right. doing this on a regular basis, I mean, it's, uh, I'm a believer. As you right. saw that picture with me surrounded by all these sprouts, I'm a believer. So let's talk about those benefits because You've been doing this for a while. 40, there was 40 once years. a time when you didn't do it, then there's a time you started doing it. So what are some extra added health benefits that someone would might experience if they start doing the sprouting and, and, and eating them? Yeah, so. there, there's a whole host of benefits. You could Google the health benefits of sprouting in my little book, Sprout Power. Right. There's a long list. I mean, it, 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 uh, it gives nutrients to every cell in your body. Uh, sprouts are loaded with fiber. So they help uh, things move through the digestive tract. Uh, they they uh, they do things for your your the walls of your arteries. Right. They provide nutrients to every single organ of the body. Uh, I mean the the list just goes on and on. They help with your eyes. They help with you with different kinds of. Many of them are very highly anti-cancer. Uh, mm. such as there's a chemical in broccoli sprouts, which has been well researched. Right. It's called sephoraphane. And studies have shown that it is a potent uh, anti-cancer wow. nutrient. And so whether it's cancer, heart disease, uh, diabetes, the list goes on, you know, any major uh, condition is going to be, uh, your body will be stronger when you when you regularly eat sprouts of microgreens covid-19 people are concerned about you know getting the coronavirus and if you build up your nutrients when this virus comes in go. to your nose or into your mouth and then you know the little crown uh, attaches itself to different cells inside your nasal cavity or inside sure. your your respiratory tract uh, if if those cells that the coronavirus attaches it to are strong, your body is much more able to fight this uh, this virus, wow. and you so you build up those cells, you build up your your immune system through eating uh, a healthy diet, and sprouts and microgreens are just top notch. That's amazing! Wow. So I've had I've had sprouts before. I've never actually done it myself, with the exception of you know sprouting mm -hmm. beans, which I think you're going to give us a little bit of a demo or show mm -hmm. tell us walk us through the process in just a moment. But I've had sprouts on sandwiches. I've had sprouts on wraps. I've had sprouts on salads, and they're just that. It seems like an extra added just 
I don't know, I call it like a happy additive, a happy substance to it. It just kind of gives substance to your food, and they taste great. And so I've, I've enjoyed them as well. I just don't, now that I'm hearing you talk about it, I'm learning on the, all the benefits, and, and you're going to walk us through in just a moment. So, uh, you know, you've spoken about reasons to sprout, uh, you know, on... People don't sprout, right? So there's, there's reasons people don't sprout, but obviously you're here to tell us why we need to sprout. And I want to just talk about now, kind of walk us through the process of the sprouting process because you've mentioned broccoli sprouts. I've heard of alfalfa sprouts, bean sprouts, but you have something here, I believe, the, a, a little visual for us on how, what, what the process actually looks like from start to finish and how long it takes. Right, yes, uh, I decided to put together some slides to teach people in a really simple way uh, how to grow a seed called a lentil. Okay. Lentils sprout just fabulously. So uh, there's our first picture, and let me just walk you through what to do. Uh, uh, these are, no, just for the record, these are lentils, and then people can buy lentils anywhere, right? Lentils yeah, are pretty much available it's anywhere. It's a very uh, easily accessible seed. Most markets have lentils. Right. Uh, um, health food stores, you can buy them in bulk. They're very easy to get. Right. And they're also very easy to sprout. So if you look at this picture, you'll see uh, that is a quart jar uh, where it says Monday morning. And what I did was I took a bag of lentils and I poured uh, half of that bag into that jar. And you can see that the seeds go up about halfway. And then I filled it up with water. And I did this on a Monday morning. So uh, right across from it, you'll see the next picture. It's the same jar, same uh, lentil seeds, but five hours later, that same day on Monday, you can see how those seeds have expanded uh, dramatically, right. and they're now, they're almost up at the top of the water. Wow. And so those seeds are uh, active, they're germinating, they're, right. they're growing. And if, if you do this with a seed and you can see it growing up like that, after a few hours in the water, that tells you that it's a, it's a, it's a good seed, it's not a bad seed. Right. Some seeds don't sprout because they're bad, they're too old, okay. but most seeds do. So five hours later, that's what you have. Now then, let's go to the next slide. Uh, and this was just the same day. I took that jar that was full of water uh, and I poured, I had a little, a little sprout lid, which are easy to get with little holes. Mm -hmm. So I poured the water into a sink and then right across the net, you can see I took that jar and I tilted it and I put it in a little plastic, uh, just a little plastic tray. Yeah. Yeah, and so that the, the water would just continue to go out. You don't want water. You don't want your seeds sitting in water uh, once you've begun sprouting them. And so that's what I do. I take it, I just let it sit there on an angle. And uh, the idea basically is that you give them a, a bath one right. time to get them growing. Okay. And then you rinse them twice a day. You give them a shower. That's a simple way to say it. Give them a bath okay. once to get them going. And then you rinse them twice a day and give them a shower. And then you just keep pouring out the water, put more water in, pour it out. And you do that twice okay, a day. Sorry, I got a question. So, the, okay. so you said that one picture showed about five hours. So do you leave the water in there for five hours and then pour it out or how yes. long? Okay. Yes, you just so. you soak the seeds for five hours and then you pour the water out. Okay. And then you let it sit on an angle so the water will continue to drain. Right. And then uh, what I did that on Monday, I started them on Monday morning, Monday afternoon, I drained out the water. Monday evening, I took that same jar and I probably took the lid off right. and put water in from the sink, just put it under a, under a, a right. faucet sure. and filled it up and then drained it out. Okay. And I let it sit there overnight. Right. And so again, the idea is you give them a, a, a bath right. <laughs> under the water one time, okay. and then you rinse them, which is your shower, you, give, you okay. rinse them twice a day. So let's okay. go back to the screen. And so now you've got, you can see, I started them Monday morning, and by Tuesday morning, not only were the seeds, had the seeds grown up in that uh, little quart jar, right. but if you look really carefully, you can see that they are uh, sprouting, they're okay. growing, and that's only one day. Okay. And then the, and then what happened was uh, by Tuesday, evening, uh, they were growing up and, and I had too many. Okay. So, so that eight, that little uh, quart jar was too small. Okay. And so then I poured the eight, the little quart jar into a two quart jar. Right. And what you see on the, on the opposite side there, that is now a two quart jar. Wow. And I rinsed them Tuesday morning. I rinsed them Tuesday evening. 
I rinse them Wednesday morning and sometime during the rest of the day Wednesday I took that picture and you can see now that the sprouts have grown all the way up to the top of the two quart jar. So this is just two days. So again, you just soak them over, you soak them for a few hours, pour out the water, and okay. you rinse them twice a day, morning and evening, and within 24 hours, they're rapidly growing up and they're starting to sprout. And with by, by two days, you have uh, a full two quart jar full of sprouts that are ready to eat. Okay, and so by just two days? Yeah, two days. So and do you let them go any further than that? To, do they keep growing and do you, or do you just, is that the prime time yeah, to eat them well, at that point? Yeah, yeah, it's really a, a preference thing. All right. Uh, sometimes, you know, I grow them three days, maybe four days. Lentils right. grow very fast, but I typically, with my lentils, I like uh, two days. Okay. And so I grow them about this big, and, that, and that's called, they're not in the microgreen stage yet, they're in the sprouting stage, right. because they're just starting to grow, and after two days, those lentils are ready. So you could take that jar, you could pour the lentils into a bag, and you can put it in your refrigerator, or you can just stick the jar in your refrigerator, okay. and then you don't do any more rinsing, and when it's time for lunch, you just take that jar, take off the lid, pour them into your, your salad and whatever okay. other things you add into your salad and you've got living food in your salad. So you wouldn't, you, so you can eat these raw just like that without even cooking them. That's right, you right. I, I, I never cook my sprouts. Now, some right. people do, they cook their sure. sprouts, but I don't. Okay. And with lentils, uh, you know, lentils have a very mild taste. Right. It's kind of an earthy taste, but there's sure. not a lot of a lot of flavor to lentils. It's a little bit like some sprouts, a lot of sprouts are a little bit like tofu. Right. That depending upon how you season them, right. that's the flavor that they take. Nice. So now there's other sprouts like uh, arugula. You grow, I like to grow arugula into the microgreen stage and I put those on my salad and they are spicy. <laughs> They've got kick and I love them. All right. And then sunflower sprouts, I grow those into the microgreen stage and, and those are just, uh, they're the king of microgreens. They are delicious. Oh, wow. A lot of market, yeah. A lot of markets uh, will, or at least a lot. There's growers that grow sunflowers, and they send these to restaurants. And uh, you know, it, it's just a delicacy, and they can charge a lot. And my kids, they will just pick. You know, when I bring in a big tray of sunflower greens, greens, my kids will just start picking. <laughs> Wow. And, and sometimes, you know, I'll cut them up, I'll put them in a little bowl for them, I'll add a little bit of salt, a little bit of nutritional yeast, mix it up, and my kids just devour that. Wow. And, uh, and so sunflower uh, greens, the microgreen sprouts, they taste really, they taste really good. Arugula's got more of a kick. Uh, there's a wide variety. Clover is more mild, alfalfa, it has an alfalfa right. taste. Uh, but a lot of them, you know, it really depends upon how you season them. And so with lentils, uh, you can grow lentils on a regular basis. And what I do many times is once I've got my jar of lentils or my bag in my, mm -hmm. uh, in my refrigerator, I will, when I have my granola in the morning or my oatmeal or a waffle, uh, on go the lentils. Wow. And then on top of the waffle, you know, with the lentils, I've got some blueberries or some strawberries and lentils just make a really nice addition wow. to a pancake, to a waffle, to, um, to oatmeal, to granola. And then when I have lunch, it goes in my salad. You can put it on a sandwich, you can put it on a wrap. And once you learn how to do it, uh, it's really a child can grow lentils. It's very easy, very accessible, and if you do it on a regular basis, and if you Google health benefits of lentil sprouts, I mean, you can right. do health benefits of alfalfa sprouts, health benefits of broccoli sprouts, of clover sprouts, uh, you will find that the, the nutrients that are in these sprouts are uh, practically oh, off the charts. And they're very easy to grow, very easy to consume on a regular basis. And people just, you know, they don't know what to do. I've heard people say, I'd, I'd like to sprout, but I don't know where to start. Right. You know, it's kind <laughs> of, uh, it's daunting to them to think, how do I do that? Right. And, and I have, a, as, as you, you know, I not only have a book on this, 
but I actually have an entire course where okay. I teach people through video instruction exactly how to grow these seeds, how to grow many different kinds okay. of seeds, and I demonstrate that right in front of I'm them. A, I'm gonna tell, we're going to come right back to that in just a moment. I have to ask this question, though, because there's got to be someone right now watching this that probably is thinking, this just sounds real new agey, right? It kind of sounds <laughs> like something mystical or people of that type of culture or, or mentality might do. Is, have you ever had somebody challenge you on that? Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I, I know that a lot of people that are into the New Age movement and into the mystical movement and into all kinds of things, many of them do sprout. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of, uh, of raw restaurants right. that are out there in certain cities. I don't know if there's one in St. Louis. It just depends on, <laughs> you know, I've gone in, I, I travel in, and I'm in a lot of airports and some airports have good vegetarian options. Some airports don't like Phoenix. They hardly right. have any vegetarian food. Right. So depending <laughs> upon the, uh, if you go to California, you'll have lots of restaurants that serve sprouts. So it depends on the area, but there are many uh, restaurants around the country mm -hmm. that uh, have delicious raw food uh, cuisine and they right. have lots of sprouts. And sometimes they also have books about meditation and mysticism and mm -hmm. things that, that we would uh, stay away from because it's sure. not in the Bible. Right. But uh, as far as sprouting itself, I mean, when you go back to, to Genesis, the Bible says, uh, God says I ha to Adam and Eve, I've given you every seed mm. bearing, uh, That's right. you know, <laughs> bearing uh, fruit and the, and the vegetables. So God originally gave us uh, a, right. a diet from the soil and it was grown from seeds. That's right. And so the idea of growing a sprout is not a new age concept. Uh, it's I any seed that anybody grows in their garden, they're sprouting. They either you know, get them started right. before they put them in their garden or mm -hmm. they plant the seeds in the garden. Uh, so we all have been eating sprouted things all of our lives. Right. Uh, but the, but like, like I said, the benefit of doing it yourself right. is that it's inexpensive, it's easy, and you're bypassing all of the, the chemicals and the de deficient soil, et cetera, et cetera. So you're getting, you're getting the most potent uh, food mm. that you can eat. And, and it's easy to do. Right. And like I said, once you learn how to do That's it, right. I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, uh, when I was a teenager, I, got it, I was addicted to some things that are not good mm -hmm. and I gave those things up. Sure. But I've continued sprouting because right. I know that sprouting is really good for my body. Right. And I've learned that. And, and the evidence is there. There's a, there's a website, the uh, International Sprout Growers Association. And that All website right. uh, is loaded with uh, scientific studies right. on the health benefits of growing sprouts and microgreens. So this is not a new age thing. Right. It's like exercise. You. you know, people sure. get into yoga and... Uh, you know, they, 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 they discover many times that the, while the exercises may be good, the right. philosophy that's underneath there isn't good. Right. Uh, and of course, you can attach a philosophy to just about anything. Mm -hmm. but, but the very, just the simple process of growing seeds right. and, and growing sprouts and microgreens, you know, there's nothing new age about that. It's, it's, it's biblical right. and it's healthy. Absolutely. I have to admit something. When I looked at the sheet where they where we told, told us the topic we were going to be talking about today, I stopped in my mind and I thought to myself, sprouts, really? Yeah. But after hearing you talk about this, you've got me interested and I'm assuming there's someone watching right now that wants to know a little bit more about this. And this kind of sets us up for you to be able to, to give us a little bit more detail about your website because if you want to learn more how to actually do this, you teach us how to do that through your, your website. So tell us a little yes, bit about that. Uh, we have a course. And as I mentioned, that's why, you know, that's why I, I walk people through the, uh, the lentils, those pictures. Mm -hmm. So I could show people that they can do this in their, in their home. And right. it's very easy to do. Now, we've all, my, I have a, a friend of mine, a partner who I work with at Whitehorse Media, and because he knows all about how much I've been sprouting, uh, mm -hmm. we decided to put together, to team up and put together an entire course. Course, wow. So I'm the speaker and the demonstrator, and he was the uh, recorder. Sometimes my sure. kids recorded when he couldn't do it, so right. my, my daughter or my son <laughs> had the cell phone. But we, we actually recorded an entire series 
right. where uh, I, I show, I'm in my kitchen, I've got all my different little, uh, I've got the jars, I've got the small trays, the bigger trays, the larger trays for the microgreens, and I demonstrate how to grow alfalfa. Bro we have first sections called the ABCs, alfalfa, mm -hmm. broccoli, clover. And then we have uh, lentils, mung, and peas, the LMPs. Right. And we also have uh, barley and rye. And then we have sunflowers. And we have uh, buckwheat groats. Uh -huh. and, and, and they watch me in my kitchen with my jars and my trays, morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening. They see exactly <laughs> what I do. They, they see me pouring out the water, pouring in the water. And they see the seeds growing. Right. <laughs> and then they see us with our uh, scissors snipping them off putting them in the salad, we wow. mix in the avocado and wow. squeeze in the lemon and put some uh, nutritional yeast on there and they see the whole, the whole thing. So wow. they, they learn how to do this. And in, in this course, which we've call, is called Sprouting with Steve, okay. uh, it's basically divided into three major sections where I teach people how to grow simple sprouts, mm -hmm. lots of different sprouts, uh, in different ways so people can choose. I like the jar, I like the little tray, I like this one, I like that seed. And we also tell people where to get all their seeds and all their supplies, one place. Wow. Uh, and so we go through the sprouting section and then the next section is, uh, is simple, simple microgreens where I show them how to, people how to grow them bigger. And that's uh, in soil with okay. just regular potting soil. So right. we have simple microgreens in, and I, I teach about buckwheat, great big buckwheat trays <laughs> and sunflower greens and, and wheatgrass and peas. Oh, peas are a great sprout yeah. to grow into a microgreen stage. And then we have one, one, a third section, which is on how to grow uh, simple microgreens without any dirt. So there's no potting soil or, or dirt from your garden. You're wow. just using just your seeds and water. And so I, I demonstrate that and they watch them grow. They watch the uh, kohlrabi grow and these different seeds, mustard greens, and, and they just grow right there and they see all that. So the course walks people through. It's like a, it's a master course on teaching people exactly what to do. We have a motto and the motto is you can do it. That's right. So as I'm demonstrating this, I'm looking at the camera and I'm saying, now you can do what I'm doing. You know where to get these seeds now because we tell them where to get them all from one, one place and we show them the different options the different kinds of jars and trays. We show them how to soak them, how to drain them, how to rinse them. They watch them grow. So it's very, uh, it's very practical. I mean, as you know from reading my books, one of the mm -hmm. gifts that God has given me is an, is an ability to teach. I'm right. a teacher. Amen. I That's make right. things simple. Absolutely. And I, and I do the same thing in the sprouting course. Now, of course, people can, um, you know, they can do their own research. They can read books. They can go on YouTube. They can watch a whole bunch of different videos, which often go in many different directions. Mm -hmm. And the, everybody is, of course, free to do that. But if they want to be spoon fed and learn exactly how to do it and go to one place, mm -hmm. one place in a simple way, uh, that's what Sprouting with Steve is right, all about. Right. I, I pulled it up right here. You could probably see it on my iPad, sproutingwithsteve.com. I've already went there on my iPad. You can go there as well, uh, sproutingwithsteve.com. I think we even had a little a picture with the website, and it kind of shows again for those who might have just tuned in. There we go. Uh, there's Pastor Steve Wahlberg with all of his sprouts. Yes, and, wow. the, and those are actually <laughs> from the court. Those pictures were taken. You can see on the, on the upper right-hand corner there, you can see me with a big tray, and that's buckwheat lettuce. Lettuce. Buckwheat lettuce is fabulous, and below that is purple Rambo radish, and then on the on the left side are those are sunflower greens, and right in the middle there there's uh, there's there's mung, and on top with me pointing my finger over there, those are pea sprouts, and those are all oh. those pictures are from are actually pea microgreens. It almost looks like uh, uh, wheatgrass. Yeah, no, that, the, those, wow. I know, those are peas. The wheatgrass wow. are somewhere else. The wheatgrass are over where I've got my thumbs up over there in the right-hand okay. corner. The wheatgrass are there over on oh, the side. Yeah. That's wheatgrass. And so, and down below that is a big tray of sunflower greens where Abby and Seth are uh, taking, <laughs> taking bite. That's Abby, my 12-year-old, Seth, our 16-year-old. And they're right there ready to start eating. Wow. And so, all, and all those pictures are taken from the course. So wow. I'm showing people how to grow those things. And then we just took a collage of those, 
those pictures and put them into that. Uh, That's amazing. That so, so picture. obviously the course goes into great detail on a variety of different yes. seeds that you can sprout. But I just have to ask you some. Maybe somebody else is wondering this. If you just had two or three go-to sprouts, that if, if you just if your go-to, if that's something that you could just use on a daily basis, two or three, what are your favorites? Well, the simplest ones to grow, very simple, are those lentils. Okay. And also mung. It's hard to go go wrong with mung. Now, mung you normally need to get probably not at a market, but at a health food store. Okay. Some uh, like not far from where I live, there's a Pilgrim's Market, and okay. they've got bulk bins, and you can buy plenty of mung seeds and they're not uh, they're not expensive and they're super simple to grow in a jar uh, there's other ways to grow them but so I would say you know the simplest are our lentils uh, mung another very simple one is sunflower seeds okay. raw and that's raw sunflower, raw sunflower seeds you can soak your raw sunflower seeds in a jar like they saw with the lentils right. you soak them I typically soak them overnight and then I drain out the water and I tilt the jar, and then in the evening I, put, I give them another rinse, drain out the water, tilt the jar, and within, within two days, you'll have nice size raw sunflower seeds that are sprouting. This, and these are not with the shells. When you, when, you, when you grow them into the bigger microgreen stage, you wanna have them with the shell. Mm -hmm. And I teach people how to do that, but sure. for, for just with the jar, uh, raw organic sunflower seeds without a shell, you can grow those very easily, and those are great in your oatmeal, your granola, on top of your waffles, in your salads, and they taste, uh, they taste like sunflower seeds. They're, they're nutty, and yet when they're growing into the sprouting stage, uh, like I said, the vitamin E content has just uh, multiplying in sunflowers. That's a lot, a lot of vitamin E. And you do research, you know, on what does vitamin E do for the body? What does right. vitamin B complex do for the body? Right. What does vitamin uh, C do for the body? Right. What does vitamin A and all these different vitamins? And then you look at how many of these vitamins are in uh, sprouted seeds and microgreens. Then you realize, you know, wow, this is really beneficial to the body. I mean, I've had lots of people say to me, and I, I thank God I know that, you know, anything can happen to anybody. I'm thankful that I'm still alive at 61. Mm -hmm. But at 61, I feel like, you know, I'm doing pretty good. You know, Amen. I feel like I can still go jogging and walking for four miles. Praise the Lord. Uh, and I, you know, I'm happy. I'm blessed. <laughs> I've been through a lot. God has brought me through many dark days. Uh, he's given me the strength to go through these things. And I think that sprouting has been a big part of my, uh, wow. you know, the health that I have. So your favorite out of all of them, what is that? Which one? My favorite? Your favorite. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite would be probably sunflowers okay. grown into the microgreen stage and buckwheat. Uh, and also, uh, I really like uh, arugula. Arugula. <laughs> yeah, right. when I did my nice. course, this company that we work, work with is called True Leaf Market, where we get all our seeds. Mm. They sent me a bunch of seeds and different supplies to demonstrate because they know that, you know, we're, we're doing this and we're mm -hmm. directing people to their company. So they were happy to send me a whole bunch of free supplies. Mm -hmm. And when I started sprouting arugula, <laughs> oh, I just, I mean, I like arugula in my garden. Right. And another benefit of growing sprouts is you, you don't have to, you don't have to deal with weeds right. <laughs> in your garden where you have to get out there and weed. I mean, there's no weeds growing in a little tray of arugula right. and you can grow them without any dirt uh, and within just, you know, a very short time. Right. Uh, you're putting them in your salad. That They're is delicious. awesome. So just take about a minute or so because we're getting down to almost the end of our time. But somebody might be asking, what's the best time of year to grow to grow sprouts? Is there a particular time of year? Or? Sure. You can grow any time of year as long as you're not growing them in uh, it, with the microgreens. You don't want your the temperature in your room to be too hot. You want to keep it on the cooler side, 70 degrees, because they could, you know, they're more susceptible to mold. Uh, for right. me personally, I ha I'm in my garden during the spring and the summer, but once it gets colder and the snow starts coming down and I can't grow anything in my garden, uh, I shift gears to sprouts and I go. grow all winter, all, all kinds right. of different sprouts so I can have fresh veggies in the middle of the winter. Uh, but you can do it any time of year. 
<laughs> and uh, in my course, I, I explain all this and that's teach awesome. people what to do. Absolutely, and that's actually what we're going to do now. We're not quite finished yet. We still have a little over a couple of minutes yet left. But again, Sprout Power, the little booklet you can get from White Horse Media. Yes. And uh, we're going to put up in just a moment, uh, uh, we're going to bring up here exactly how you can contact White Horse Media, how you can get a copy of uh, Pastor Wilberg's books, uh, his new book on climate change, again on Armageddon, and also everything you've been hearing about sprouting, sprout power, the new little booklet, as well as how to uh, get in contact with this new course on his website. Uh, we're going to go to that uh, right now. So again, uh, get out your notepad, get out your pens. Here it is. For more information about White Horse Media, please contact them at whitehorsemedia.com. That's whitehorsemedia.com or sproutingwithsteve.com. Their number is 1-800-782-4253. That's 1-800-782-4253. Their mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. That's P.O. Box 130, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. Welcome back, friends. We've had such a wonderful time with Pastor Steve Wahlberg from White Horse Media. Pastor, give us some final thoughts, some final remarks on the school, the cost, things like that associated with Yeah, and Sharon, with let me just uh, share a text. Uh, 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, mm. even as your soul prospers. So God wants us to be healthy, and sprouting is about one of the best things you can do for your body. So as I mentioned, we have a course for those who are interested. Uh, the main website is sproutingwithsteve.com. They right. can go on that page and they can read all about the course. They can watch a video there of me talking about sprouting and the course. And and, and there is a cost to it, but it, we've spent, I don't know how many hours filming, recording and all this. So we feel it's reasonable. It's just a one-time cost. There's no, uh, no gimmicks, nothing. We even have a money back guarantee if you don't like it, All right. which we, you know, people don't sure. uh, do that. They don't ask for their money back. Only one time, I think, of all the people that have joined, and that person wow. was probably too busy. But anyway, if they want to join the course, uh, when they check out, there's a little discount code area where they can type in uh, a discount code, friend of Steve, no spaces, friend of Steve. And if they do that, if they do that, they get the course at half off. And wow. then they get an email with the membership uh, information. They log into a website and they can go and they can get, uh, they can watch all the videos. So wow. it's all there. We're here to help. We hope it's a blessing <laughs> to lots of people. Man, you got me, you got me, you won me over, man. <laughs> I'm going to sign up. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become a member of this so I can sign up and watch all the videos. My friends, th that's what it's about. We are about the gospel, and a major part of the gospel is the health message. It's about learning how to take care of yourself. It's about giving glory to God. That's what this is ultimately all about. It's, it's His property. It's His body, and you are His child. And so, Pastor, thank you so much for joining us today. We, again, always thank you for taking time to join us on these special programs. We want to say God bless you. We're praying for all of you, and until next time, May God bless you abundantly.